In today's video, we will be discussing an introduction to MATLAB, as well as installation, starting and exiting the program, using it as a calculator, and error messages. To download MATLAB, click the link in the description. It will bring you to this page and you can enter an email. Then fill out the form to create your MathWorks account. It will ask you to use a work or university email, but you don't have to. Then go to your inbox to verify it and click the link. Finalize your account by filling out the form. It'll bring you to this page and you can fill out this form to download the software. I'm just entering some fake information because I already have MATLAB on my computer. But you can fill out the form according to your situation and hit agree. Select a trial package for download. We are going to be using MATLAB Essentials, however there are many more to choose from that can cover different technical aspects of MATLAB. Select the version of MATLAB depending on your computer. It will download and usually go to the Downloads folder where you can open it from. Now click on the MATLAB icon and type in the email and password that you used to sign up. Accept the agreements, select the license, and select the folder where you would like to download the program. Keep all of the default options selected, and once it's downloaded, you can search for it on your computer. Double click the icon to open. Once it's open, this is what you see. Up here is the MATLAB folder where all of your files are going to be stored by default. This area that we're looking at here, the entire window, is called the command window. This is where all of our MATLAB outputs are going to be shown. These are prompt arrows, and any code you type will start from here. This is just a quick way to get a hold of any of the files that are saved in the MATLAB folder. So if you double click one, it will open up here. Next is the workspace. Anytime we create variables, they will show up in our workspace. For example, if I say A equals 5. You go to the workspace, A is stored as the variable with a value of 5. So although the current folder shows everything that's saved in the MATLAB folder, anytime you save files, you can choose where you want to save them and they may not always be saved in the default folder. In that case, you can go to open and browse through your computer to find the file that you'd like to open. So MATLAB also has a help button up here. And if we click it, we are brought to MATLAB documentation where you can search anything you might be having a problem with. For example, loops. This is documentation from MathWorks, which is the original website that you downloaded MATLAB from. So it is very helpful with anything MATLAB related. Lastly, if we press the up key on our keyboard, we can access the most recent commands that we've used with MATLAB. Even if you've closed MATLAB in between sessions, these are all stored in the program. So let's try doing some calculations with MATLAB. MATLAB does numerical calculations in the order of bed mass. So brackets, exponents, multiplication and division, then addition and subtraction. Let's try using it as a basic calculator. At these prompt arrows, all we have to do is type in an equation. So for example, four plus two times 4 divided by 8. Note that MATLAB gives us the answer here in our command window, and it assigns it the variable ANS. ANS is short for answer. If we had written the above equation but had assigned it to a variable like x, and initially had put x equals our equation, MATLAB would assign the answer to the variable x, because that was what we initially assigned the equation to. Up here, we didn't do that and so MATLAB automatically stores the answer in the variable ANS. We can go to the workspace to check out all the current variables that MATLAB is storing. As you can see here, the variable ANS has a value of five, as well as X that I created here also has a value of five. Now let's try another calculation. 
4 plus 3 minus 5 over 9. Now the answer here is 6.44, but note that MATLAB also assigned this answer to the same variable ands. Both of these numbers cannot be assigned to the variable ands. So MATLAB actually overwrites it and keeps only the most recent number attached to this variable. And over here, you can see ands is now equal to 6.44 instead of 5. We will talk more about variables in a future lesson though. Now let's talk about error messages. If I accidentally type in an expression that MATLAB is unable to use, such as a money sign here, and I hit enter, it will give me an error message, and these are in red. So MATLAB will indicate with the arrow where the error is. And as you can see, it's pointing up here to the dollar sign to indicate that it's invalid. It also tells us error. The input character is not valid in MATLAB statements or expressions. MATLAB will also give an explanation to indicate what the error is. In this case, we have an invalid expression or statement, which is our dollar sign. Now to exit out MATLAB, it's the same as an internet browser where you can expand it to full screen, minimize it, or close it out with the X. If we close this, anything in our command window is not going to be saved. To save code, we have to put it in something called a script. And we will learn more about scripts in a future lesson. So we will close out this window and turn off MATLAB. So that was all for today. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and check out the next lesson where I'm going to be talking about how to create variables. Thanks for watching.